What's up guys, my name is Gary Blackwood, also known as Gazzaby123. Returning to our roots today, we're getting straight into the action. We're playing 510 at the Bellagio, and just five minutes into the session, I pick up pocket jacks. I'm in the big blind, middle position is open to $30. The hijack makes the call, the cutoff makes the call, the small blind makes the call, and I have a very clear squeeze here from the big blind. I make it $160 to go. Probably a bit too small here in hindsight, could go like 180 or something, but no harm done as action is back on under the gun and he moves all in. Everyone else gets out of the way, I ask the dealer for a quick count, it's roughly $700 or so, I'm happily calling it off for anything under 1k, so I go ahead and make the call. I ask my opponent once or twice, he says he's a run at once kind of guy, so we're going once here for this pot worth about fifteen or $1600. The flop is queen high, that's a little scary, safe turn, and then a J-boy bangs off on the river, I immediately announce my hand, as he is turning over his hand, he's got ace-king suited, didn't even need that jack on the river, up about $800 dollars after winning this flip after just a few minutes today what a great start i've got a feeling it's going to be a good day today and next up i pick up jack nine of spades in early position under the gun is limped in for ten dollars i make it forty dollars next to act the button makes the call the big one makes the call and the limper calls as well lots of multi-way pots coming our way today we go four ways to queen seven four with one spade i've got nice back doors but i don't think we want to see bet this hand four ways maybe king ten or king jack with all those back doors and an over card to the board boards it checks all the way around to the button and he just checks it back the eight of clubs hits the turn again it checks to me and nobody really seems interested in winning this pot and i have equity so i take a stab here for 120 dollars the small blend is the only player to make the call and we see a very bluffable king hit the river he's got a lot of hands that have to fold here hands like pocket sixes club draws all those types of hands so when he checks to me i bet out for 400 dollars and he snap folds let's go nicely maneuvered by me there picking out the equity on the turn and barreling and then finding that very bluffable river really smooth day so far game is relatively good not amazing but not terrible i've also moved seats before this next hand it's nothing to do with position i just much prefer the two seat or the seven seat in order to vlog optimally next up i pick up pocket eights in the cutoff the under the gun player is raised to 30 dollars i make the call we've got a loose passive table so i'm happy to just always call here with hands like pocket eights every other player is gonna fold and we go heads up to the flop it is jack 10 deuce with two hearts my opponent checks it on over to me and i just check it back the turn is the eight of hearts now my opponent has been chatting to me about vloggers and all that stuff today since looking at my camera so when this turn rolls off i say to him could be a very vlog worthy turn real subtle banter by me there he's actually going to stab on the turn for 40 dollars, and i decide to just call he's played well today so it can definitely check some flush draws on the flop but honestly versus such a small size i think in hindsight raise is much much better here if he bets bigger then maybe calling is okay but versus this size we should definitely raise the river is a meaningless offsuit five and he bets again this time for 230 dollars i think as played we probably can't raise the river it's really hard to get called by one pair of hands so i decide to make a relatively quick call instead of thinking about raising he's got pocket aces without a heart probably didn't miss any value there to be honest no harm done though i still think we should raise his ass on the turn it's another nice pot coming my way here just want to say that my opponent in this hand really really good for the game he's not splashed he's not loud not giving away tons of action just constantly chatting away to everyone at the table asking the recreational players about where they're going on vacation etc he made it a really nice environment and if he's watching i want to say kudos to him for that running really well so far today let's keep it going when we pick up ace five of diamonds in the hijack early position is raised to $30 he asked me for my YouTube handle earlier in the day and was watching one of my vlogs as we played this hand what a guy I'm gonna put in the three bet here I make it $100 to go the button is gonna cold call he's a bit of a loose goose and early position is gonna call as well three ways we go to the flop it is seven four three all clubs early position is now gonna lead out here for $40 really weird spot wasn't expecting that but given the price we're getting and the fact we have a double gutter I think we have to call here the button is going to get out of the way and we see the most glorious two of diamonds bang off on the turn early position is now going to check and of course we've got a very clear bet here we've got a straight lots of value to be had so i bet out for 300 dollars early position is the other side of the table he can't see how much i've bet he asks how much it is the dealer tells him it's 300 dollars he thinks for a few seconds and then moves all in for 1.3k Ugh, this is suddenly not great i don't love it but he can take this line with a hand like 
ace queen with the ace of clubs maybe ace king with the ace of clubs also probably as sets as well and maybe if he's flopped two pairs so after i get a count from the dealer i think we have to just go ahead and call i don't ask once or twice i decide this time i'm just gonna let the cards fall where they may the king of clubs hits the river which is not a great river at all but then i see my opponent's cards and realize that i was as dead as a dodo from the flop onwards i thought this was a lovely turn card but in hindsight it's a deuce of diamonds dagger through the heart i got off to a great start today but after losing this three thousand dollar and change pot i am now down four hundred dollars into the red but it's early plenty of time to get it back i ain't worried hoping we can get some of it back when i look down at ace 10 of diamonds in the big blind the button raises to 30 dollars. he's the guy from the last hand the small blind is going to make the call he's an unknown non-pro and i put the price of poker up to 140 dollars from the big blind very standard squeeze spot here with ace 10 of diamonds of course the button is going to make the call and the small blind gets out the way we go heads up to the flop it is 10 6 5 with two clubs top top is definitely worth a c bet here so i go ahead and bet out for 160 dollars around half pot and again my opponent makes the call the turn is an offsuit six not a great card when the board pairs and i don't think we can triple barrel now given how deep we are we're twenty five hundred dollars effective to start the hand so i decide to slow down and check and after a few seconds my opponent just checks it on back the river is an offsuit nine some hands improve here and maybe he checks back pocket jacks on the turn but i think we're super duper often going to have the best hand here so i go for some value on the river to the tune of four $480. My opponent doesn't waste too much time before calling. I show my hand and he starts to turn his hand over, which is never a good sign. And sure enough, he's got 10 nine of hearts. This is so annoying being three outed on the river by my opponent. But hey, what can you do? It's just a cooler and sometimes you've got to get coolered. I was having a great day today, only for this fella in C8 to single-handedly put a stop to that. He was a really nice guy, didn't catch his name. Hopefully he's still enjoying my content. I'm sure if he's watching this vlog, he's absolutely loving it. Now stuck a fair chunk for the day, but it's still early. I'm not concerned just yet. Next up, I pick up Ashak off suit in the big blind. Under the gun is raised to $30. He's a really nice American kid. I've been chatting to him on Twitter since we played this hand. An idiot UK red calls the button. Just kidding he's a buddy of mine and i call out the big blind we can't squeeze here versus the under the gun open maybe if it's like cut off open button call then we can squeeze but i decide to just call we go three ways to jack jack seven with a flush draw the seven was in the window so when i see the two jacks behind it, i nearly fall out of my chair we check it on over to the button who's going to take a stab for 40 dollars and i am always check raising this hand this deep even with the ace of hearts i decide to raise it on up i make it 140 dollars to go quite surprisingly under the gun is going to cold call this check raise really strong range assigned to him when he does that the button is going to get out of the way he was clearly just taking a stab on the flop with some air the turn is an ace to give me a full house as awesome as it is to turn a boat is this going to stop me getting paid now i wonder early position isn't too deep here he's probably got about 800 dollars or so in his stack so i decide to bet super small basically forcing him to always call with about 99% of his range drawing dead sure enough he does call this $120 bet and we see the deuce of hearts roll off on the river remember I've got the ace of hearts in my hand so flushes are really unlikely now I just think this guy's gonna have a hand like kings or queens really often here so this turn and this river are very likely gonna stop me getting paid still though gotta try I move all in for $700 ish and his chips are in the middle before mine I turn my hand over please don't show me pocket Okay, aces buddy he's actually got nine eight of hearts for a very sick cooler i honestly thought that river had killed me but it's resulted in me scooping in this really nice pot sick cooler for my opponent like i say really nice guy but i will absolutely take it this is actually the last hand of this session i only played for a couple of hours more poker later in the episode but for now i'm racking up my chips and heading to the cashier ready to head across town to check into our summer airbnb and reunite with some absolute legends that i haven't seen since last summer all right guys we are done that was a whirlwind session played for two hours coming at you from las vegas boulevard again with my boy jp aka bbs sick did you win money today i did biggest winning session of the trip so far 1300 let's go oh, baby. but yeah that's us done with the poker for now be more later in the episode but we're going to check into our house for the summer now super excited to go check it out yeah let's switch to there 
So I've been living out a suitcase since I arrived in Las Vegas. I am delighted to finally be heading to the summer house. We're going to be here for seven weeks, seven or eight of us coming and going over to summer. The house is beautiful, but it's very clear there's one master bedroom and it's absolutely beautiful. So we're going to do a PLO flip between all of us that are staying to see who gets choice of room first. Fortunately, your boy Gazi is going to win the most important flip of the summer. I get the big bedroom all the way down at the end of the hall. Absolutely delighted to win that. Fuck. Really, really happy to be into the house, into the big bedroom. Let's go. All right, here we are. We are back at the Bellagio. Um, yeah, it's the next day. We checked in the house. The house is lovely, really happy with it. And we're here. We're going to play some cards. Here with Max Demerick, who has come all the way from Australia. How long was the journey? 24 hours. How much sleep did you get? Fuck all. And you ready to play today? Yes. Let's do it. Yeah, we're going to jump in. We're going to play some cards. We're going to win all the money. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Let's do it. One take, mate. One take. The intro done in one take is a great start to the day. I've got a really good feeling about the grind ahead now. Into a very tight, very grindery 5-10 game. It's not the best, but I'm not a fan of seat hopping, so I'm going to just sit here and grind it out until it gets better. 35 minutes into the session before our first hand of the day, I'm in the small blind with Ace Jack off suit. The cutoff is raised to $30. He's an older fella, not a pro. And then a young aggro kid who's been in lots of pots so far then re-raises the button to $100. I think the button is going to be super out of line here lots of hands like queen 10 offsuit and 9 7 suited and stuff like i say he's been really loose and really aggressive so far so i decided to put in a light cold four bet to 260 dollars this is a little loose but like i say i expect the button to be three betting relentlessly here the cutoff gets out of the way action is back on the button and he makes the call we go heads up to our first flop of the day here it is queen 5 4 rainbow bit of a swing and a miss for me this is not a range bet either but i do block ace queen suited and queen jack suited with my suits so I decide to see bet for $150, hoping to just take it down, but unfortunately the button is going to make the call. The turn is an offsuit 7, I see no reason to continue barreling my hand, I would rather barrel ace king that unblocks the jacks, tens and nines region, so I just check it over to the button. He's going to think for a few seconds, and then just check it back. The river is a 9, and again I decide to check. I feel like when I decide to check on the turn and then bet the river, I kind of look like I have a bluff here, and this guy might call me, so I just give it up. After a few seconds, my opponent sheepishly checks back. I am going to lose this hand, but not to a hand that I expected to lose to. He's got Jack-9 offsuit. Okay. To be fair, my read was pretty damn on point. If only I had a read that he would 3-bet that kind of hand and then call a 4-bet with it. I put every hand that I play into my non-recording phone. As I'm typing it out, he asks me, are you marking me as a whale? Absolutely not. He took my YouTube handle. He's probably watching this. Nope, I definitely don't think you're a whale. A little loose and a little aggressive sometimes but not a will at all down 650 dollars after that hand but that could be about to change when i look down at king queen of hearts in the small blinds the cutoff is a non-pro he raises to 30 dollars it's on me here and i'm gonna put in the re-raise i make it 120 dollars to go obviously a very standard three bet for me the cutoff is gonna think for a few seconds and then makes the call we go heads up to king nine five rainbow really good start for me here flopping top pair good kicker i'm just range betting here so i bet out for 80 dollars and after about five seconds the cutoff makes the call the turn is the six of hearts to give me top pair and a flush draw but it's also a relatively connected card hands like pocket sixes six five and eight seven suited all get there so i'm a little worried about betting and getting raised i definitely still want to bet but probably not as much as i would bet on like the two of hearts for example in the end i decide to bet an exploitative kind of milky 200 dollars it helps me bloat the pot for when we get there on the river he's not gonna raise though instead he thinks for a few seconds and just calls we see a lovely four of hearts roll off on the river i've got the second nuts now it's really hard for him to have the nuts time to go to value town i bet 650 dollars do you ever just bet the river for value and then look at the guy and know that he's going to pay you off my opponent is clearly going to call it doesn't take him long to do so i show him the bad news and something tells me that i was ahead the entire way here i was down 600 dollars in the first hand now up 600 dollars just like that lovely turnaround let's keep it going now next up i pick up jack nine of diamonds on the button the cutoff is raised to 30 dollars we can definitely three bet this hand but we know we don't have much fold equity versus this guy he's just called a cold four bet with jack nine offsuit so i just call on the button here and the big blind calls as well we go three ways to the flop it is jack five three with two diamonds top pair and a flush or a really good start here the cutoff is going to see bet for 40 dollars again we could definitely raise here but i decide to just call see what happens the big blind is going to get out of the way and we see the queen of diamonds roll off on the turn this is instant 
excellent service for me. My opponent is going to continue to barrel this time for $130. I am definitely raising this hand. I decide to raise to $400 again. In hindsight, this is just too small. This is a problem that I've had in recent episodes in the vlog. I'm not raising big enough on the turn. I should be making this way closer to like five, five fifty, dollars something like that. Bit of an error by me here. My opponent is going to think for a few seconds and then make the call. The river is an offsuit six. Nothing changes. And I decide to shove all in for $1,800 trying to get max value. Like I said, this guy's been calling down really light. He called down in a three bet pot and couldn't beat one pair. He got chunks in pre-flop with ace king versus a very nitty player's pocket aces. He seems to be very loosey goosey. So I'm happy with my decision to jam. Unfortunately, it's not going to go well for me here. My opponent thinks for a while and then shows me pocket queens as he folds he's folded top set i still don't mind my line it sounds like i'm just saving face here but like i say he's called down super light already on the table today i think going for all is the play unfortunately it's backfired but hey, what can you do? I, like I say, I think the biggest mistake in this hand is not raising more on the turn. But hey, it's done now. We're up a cool $1,000 for the day. A nice comeback after that first ace jack hand. And not long after this hand, I'm going to rack up and move to a different table. For me, seat changing in game is a humongous no-no. You just don't do that, in my opinion. But the odd table change isn't the end of the world. Plus, I want to play with my buddy Max. He's come a long way and I want to hang out with him. Not long after moving to the new table, I play a very fun hand from the straddle. I'm heading into the Bellagio Sports book afterwards to break it down all right guys here we are on break in this lovely bellagio sports book just chilling in the corner it's always good to step away from the table for 10 minutes fun hand that i played i moved across to the new table um, and this older fun player looking fella raised an mp i was in the straddle you always straddle to let the table know that your action he makes it 70 to go though i've got six five off suit and i was gonna call for 60 but then i realized it was 70 and i can't like have my hand out there and be like oh actually fold so i called anyway uh, and it came down 873 with two diamonds, one spade. I check, he bets $90. I call, turn is the nine of spades to give me the straight. I check, he checks back. The river is the eight of spades. I don't think he's snap checking back turn flush draws and, or two pairs. So I go for a big chunky value bet, I bet $360. And uh, he called very quickly. I was a bit worried when he called so quickly, but uh, I turned over my hand and he looked very disappointed as he mucked his. So that, that, that was nice. Um, other than that, the game looks kind of good. It's not as good as it initially looked, but it's uh, it's not too bad. I'm playing with my buddy Max, which is always nice. But yeah, got another few hours left in me. It's still early in the day. It's uh, 2.15 p.m. So yeah, let's just uh, keep grinding and see what happens over the next couple of hours really nice hand there just before the break bit of a loose call pre-flop but if you can make up for it post-flop by running well and getting paid off then who the heck cares big pots are few and far between for me at this table a lot of folding pre-flop and a lot of small pots next up the straddle is on and i pick up pocket sixes on the button the hijack is going to raise to 60 dollars. he's not a pro action is on me and i decide to call both the blinds and the straddle are going to get out the way we go heads up to the flop 10 9 6 rainbow great start for me here with bottom set my opponent is going to see bet for $50 and I decide to put in the raise here right now I make it $200 to go I think this size finally at long last is pretty reasonable my opponent is going to think for a few seconds and make the call the turn is the five of diamonds to bring a flush draw if I had the best hand on the flop I've still got the best hand now so I decide to keep barreling I bet out for $400 and after a very long turn tank my opponent just folds this is not the wildest hand in the world but it gives me the perfect opportunity to shout out this legendary dealer he was fully American but spoke perfect Japanese. I asked him why he learned to speak Japanese. His response? To get Japanese girls. He thrilled us all with tales of his 10-day trip to Japan once. I won't go into many details about it, but let's just say his trip sounded very fruitful. He was a great guy, a fantastic dealer as well. Not much happening at this new table. A bunch of small to medium pots. Just like this Queen 10 offsuit in early position, I raised to $30. The big blind is going to make the call. I bet on the flop. I bet on the turn, and I bet on the river. My opponent calls it off with worse. Nice turn card for me there, turning top pair and getting three streets of value. Celebrating Max being in Vegas with the boys as well with a sex on the beach here. I never drink sex on the beaches outside of Vegas, but when I'm here, it's all I drink. Nothing like a few sex on the beaches and throwing some dice. But anyway, back to the poker here, and an hour after that queen 10 hands, I pick up ace queen offsuit in middle position. I raise it on up to $30. The small blind calls and the big blind 
qualifying calls as well. One of these players is a relatively passive non-pro, and one of them is a very loose goose indeed. We go three ways to the flop. It is queen, eight, three, rainbow. Top pair, top kicker versus one passive player and one loose player. Fuck the solver. I see bet for $100. The small blind gets out the way, but the big blind is going to make the call. He's the loose player that I'm talking about here. We see a nine hit the turn. Very clear value bet again here versus this guy. I choose a more appropriate-ish size on the turn of $170. My opponent goes deep into the tank. We've had a lot of long turn tanks today. He cuts out the $170 and then he adds $500 on top of it. This is a sign of strength. Not only is this guy loose, but he's loose passive and not loose aggressive. So I don't think this is a bluff. I make a very quick fold when the raise comes in. Happy to triple it off for value versus this guy, but also happy to get out of the way when he shows aggression on such a connected turn. No luck with ace queen. Why don't we try king queen instead? I raise to $30 under the gun. Next to act as a Japanese pro who puts in the re-raise to $100. I was going to fold this hand, but then the small blind calls. He's the very loose player from the last hand. So now I think we have to call in position versus the loose player. I dominate a lot of his hands like king nine and queen 10. He's even got the offsuit combos of those, I'm pretty sure. And we're deep enough with both players to make this profitable if we make a really strong hand. We go three ways to the flop. It is ace five three rainbow. I know what you're thinking. How on earth is this a vlog worthy hand after that flop? Well, hang in there guys and girls as we see the flop check all the way around. The turn is the nine of spades to bring a flush draw. If you're thinking it's still not vlog worthy, then stick with me as again, it just checks round. Seven of spades on the river. I have the king of spades in my hand here. The small blind checks it on over to me. You guys know where this is going. I blast the river for $450, approximately 1.5x pot, forcing the three better to fold all of his like tens through kings type hands. And the small blind has such a wide range anyway that we get him to fold a bunch of hands as well. Both players are going to make relatively quick folds. The small blind asked me to show the bluff. Who am I to decline an offer like that? I slam it down face up on the table. It's been a bit of a grind for me today, but a very fun table all in all. After this hand, we decide to rack up and say our goodbyes, heading to the cashier, booking yet another winning day here in Vegas. I've had one losing session so far, and it was when I played like a bongo. Play good, win money. That's the key.